Hello everybody, I hope this video finds you well. My name's Neil Thomas, I'm the Chief Executive and Principal here at Dudley College of Technology and I wanted today to welcome you to this parent talk to give you a little bit of an overview of what to expect for your son or daughter or the person you're caring for when they come and join us in the college this coming September. Now normally we do these parent talks uh, in the flesh obviously and we normally invite hundreds of um, mums and dads and carers into the college for a series of events in the hall where you can meet me, meet our vice principal and others and uh, listen to things for next year. Obviously we can't do that under the current circumstances so what we've done is recorded this video to give you a bit of an overview and then we'll be available live for online questions from anybody who wants to pose them um, later in the week. So have a watch of the video, I hope it's useful and hopefully we'll see you online later. Um, I'm very proud to be the principal at Dudley College and, and um, so I should be. And you may or may not be aware that the college is one of the only colleges in the country to have been awarded the Queen's Anniversary Prize this year, a very special moment for us. But we began our journey actually over 150 years ago specialising in technical education and we're quite a big college now. Um, you might not be able to read all of those numbers on the screen but we serve about 4,800 full-time learners each year, so the school leavers coming to us. We have about 4,000 apprentices, we look after about 3,500 adults. So it's a reasonably um, large college. But I don't want you to be daunted by that. Some people find that off-putting. I think some young people in particular worry about coming to a college of that size. We don't think of it as a great big college in that respect. We think of it as a series of little communities. And hopefully, if you manage to get a chance to come to an open day before uh, lockdown due to coronavirus, um, you will have come along and seen one of those communities. So maybe you visited Evolve, um, our building where a lot of our arts and service industries is taught, including um, where our theatre is kept. Um, maybe it's Dudley Aspire for some of our learners who need particular support due to learning difficulties or disabilities. Um, it could have been that you came and visited Dudley Sixth, which is our dedicated centre for A-levels. Enhance, which is just next door to Dudley Sixth, which also offers training for hospitality and catering students. Dudley Advance, which is our specialist facility for engineering and manufacturing. Advance 2 for modern construction methodologies. Our motor vehicle training centre down at Wolverhampton Street. Our construction apprenticeship training centre, which is at the waterfront, close to Merry Hill. Or what was the Art and Design Centre in Briley Hill, which has now been refurbished over the summer to be a new centre for digital training, as well as some of our art subjects. My point is, wherever it is you uh, end up here in Dudley College, I hope it won't feel like a great big uh, unfriendly college. I hope what it will feel like is a very friendly community focused around your particular um, area of study. Now I'm bound to say it as a college principal, but I think you made a great choice thinking of coming to Dudley, not just because of those excellent facilities that I've just talked about there, um, and not just because of this, although we're very, very proud of it, we are an Ofsted Oft Oft outstanding provider. Um, you'll have probably seen some of the things in the news about the college. Um, it's been doing very well here. We're extremely proud of the work of our students in particular here. Um, the Ofsted report, which you can obviously jump on and have a look at on our website, is full of lots of um, useful information about um, what they saw when they came to visit the college, those Ofsted inspectors. Um, feel free to have a read of it, it tells you a lot about the college. We like to focus on a couple of things in particular here. One, about our, our way that we celebrate success here, which we think is very, very important. So we're really big on celebrating success, and even in these uh, difficult times that we're in at the moment. We've been running online celebration events uh, for our students um, while they've been having to work remotely, but we do very much look forward to the day where we're doing them back in the flesh again, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future. And we also believe in something that we call the four A's, which is a bit of a, uh, a mindset, um, th thinking really about how we work here at the college and what the culture of the college is. And it asks us and the students really to commit into what these four A's, four A's stand for. Aspiration, which is all about making sure that our young people really do strive to be 
the best they can possibly be. And that's a big part of our role, not just training, not just teaching, not just supporting people to prepare for academic qualification, but really getting people to aspire to be the best they can be. And big parts of your course here at the college will focus on that. We're also big on developing attitude. I mean, we ask people to come with the right attitude, but what we mean by that actually is preparing people for their next steps. We know that people don't come to the college just for the joy of studying in Dudley College. They come because they want to go to university or go into a job. And it's our role to develop you in your wider set of skills, not just in your technical or your academic skills, um, your wider attitude to that. Um, we do really ask for absolutely for 100% attendance here. Some people ask us, is, you know, is it different from school or do they need to be here all the time? Um, yes, they do, absolutely. Moms, dads, carers, we really do need your support with this. Um, every day you miss here at the college, you're missing important input into your qualification and we can show you exactly the link between people who, whose attendance isn't high and who don't go on to achieve the grade that they um, so deserve. So attendance is absolutely mandatory and for moms and dads you will get text messages and things from us if you've got a 16, 17 year old with us who's not attending for any reason. Um, so that we can hopefully work together to um, resolve that. And the fourth A is achievement. And we really say that if you work with us on developing the aspiration, bringing the right attitude, attending all the time, and we can support you in all those, that we can guarantee you the achievement. And we've got very good at that. If you jump on our website, you'll be able to see information about our achievement rates. They've been very high here at the college for some time. But what I actually really like, one of the mo most important things that I thought that came out of the Ofsted report, if you do get a chance to uh, look at it, is what they said about learner behaviour and the culture here at the college. And it, it said this, um, uh, relationships between staff and learners continues to be exceptionally strong and le learner behaviour is exemplary. Uh, learners demonstrate very high levels of mutual respect for each other and respect for staff. And learner behaviour is excellent. And I think that's a really nice summary really of the way we try to work here. It is meant to be a more grown up environment than school. You'll see um, tutors trying to treat um, students in exactly that way. That idea of mutual respect, as Ofsted put it there, works extremely well. And it means we have a very harmonious working relationship here. Um, which we very much look forward to your son or daughter being a part of. And of course, at the end of the day, we're really judged on what happens when uh, your son or daughter leaves us and this gives you a little bit of a break you're out there this is just for full-time learners um, but it shows you that 98 percent of learners go into what we would class as a positive destination after they leave or leave us which means either they're going on to further education higher education or going into employment so um, i think that is the most important statistic for us and certainly the way we judge ourselves so that's enough for me for now, I'll be back in a moment, but I'm now going to introduce you to Diana Martin, our Vice Principal, who's going to talk a bit more about the programme of study here. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Neil. So, um, as Neil said, I'm going to talk to you a bit more about what you can expect for your son or daughter, or whoever you're caring for, when they actually start college with us. So we like to talk about what we call a programme of study, which is made up of a number of elements, which you can see there, and I'll talk through each one. So the programme of study is made up, the largest part of the programme of study is the technical or academic qualification that your son or daughter or the young person you're caring for has decided to study. That might be three A-levels, if they're going to be studying at Adelaide 6, or it might be any of our many technical programmes, whether it's engineering, whether it's hair and beauty or sport. Most of the time that your son, daughter or young person is in college will be spent developing those skills for what they're going to do next, whether it's HE or whether it's employment. Another big part of the programme of study is the opportunity for young people, if they don't get that grade four or above in English and mathematics, we do give you the opportunity to resit that here with us. And we've got really good at success rates at this, so whether you're resitting your GCSE, because that's the route that you want to take, or whether actually you're studying a functional skill, because that's the right route for you on your programme. We'll be able to support your son or daughter in making sure that they've got the English and mathematics skills to be able to progress either into a future job or onto higher levels of study whilst they're with us. Another element is work placement, Neil mentioned earlier. This is slightly different to school because we're actually preparing young people for progressing into a career. So there will be an element where young people will have to attend a work placement. 
This year, there's a, big, there's a big change in some of the programmes we're offering. So we'll be one of the first colleges in the country to be offering the new technical ed level education courses called T-Levels. There are three pathways this year. So your son, daughter or young person may be studying the education, digital or construction T-Level. And as part of that, there's a huge industry placement, which is really about getting those young people ready for a career. These have been designed by employers. And what employers are saying is they want those young people to have that industry experience. So that's a really big, important part of the programme of study and enables the young people to get a real feel of what it's like to work in that industry. So another part of the, perform of the course is a performance improvement programme. This is really the tutorial element of the programme. So we, we theme this around those kind of softer skills and we call this the VESPA mindset which is really important this year and I'll, I will touch on that again a bit later but it's really about how do I organise my workload, how am I going to use my study time effectively, am I keeping myself safe, am I having healthy relationships, so a much more about um, kind of a softer skill that you need to develop in order to progress onto the next part of your training or employment. And these are delivered in a mixture of group um, tutorials and one-to-ones with the course tutor for your son, daughter or the person that you're caring for. All of those elements are equally important and none of them are optional. So if it is that you have to resit maths and English, we will be chasing you for attend your son or daughter for attendance just as much as on their academic or technical programme. So they are all equally as important and we do expect absolute attendance to all elements of that programme of study for young people. So obviously I'm sure many of you are wondering how colleges are going to open in September and what's going to be different. I'm going to start this by saying this is where we are today. Obviously as everyone will know there are government updates on a very regular basis and I can assure you that we are keeping up to date with these and making sure that we are following these. But for now, what I would say is, at the moment, there will be still social distancing. So the classrooms will be laid out so that social distancing is adhered to. And there'll be one-way systems around college to make sure, again, that we're able to adhere to social distancing. You'll see some screens in our front-facing areas, so whether that's learner services or as you come into the receptions. And there will also be enhanced cleaning, so door handles, uh, light switches, lots of different things that people generally touch will be constantly cleaned and updated and our refectory and eateries are likely to be managed in a different way so these are quite busy places as you can imagine in quite a large college so we're looking at how we manage those differently whether we do delivery services and orders but again that could change as guidance changes. Your son, daughter or young person may see some staff and students wearing PPE whilst they're in college. This is generally if they're going to have to do any work up close with people or if a student or staff member has an underlying health issue and have been recommended to wear PPE. I think we are getting more used to seeing people in this out and about, but it's just to, to prepare your son or daughter that they may see some staff wearing that, and it's usually if they've got to get up, up close to have a look. So if I'm thinking of our beauty department when they're doing eyelashes or they're doing massage. We need to have a look at how that's working so they would wear them that then. I mentioned the VESPA mindset, we're very conscious that a lot of young people have been out of education or will have been by September for almost six months, so we want to spend some time with young people, getting them in the right mindset to achieve the best they can. So we work with young people on what's their vision, so what do they, where do they want to get to, how much effort do they need to, be in, to put in, so do they understand what it means to achieve three A levels and how much work they're going to have to put in to get those high grades, do they understand how they need to develop those technical skills to get to the best job they possibly can and how are they going to practice that and I mean, and, and then the A mentions attitude which Neil already touched on so making sure that they turn up to college with the right attitude to learn and that's a really important thing. There will also be and I'm sure your son or daughter or, or, or the person you're caring for has seen this through school and over the last kind of few months that there is going to be an increased use of virtual technologies and um, so this will be used for both learning and support. So if it continues as it is at the moment, there's a potential that we won't have all of our students in college at the same time because we do have a lot of students. So there might be a mixture of on-college learning and virtual learning. But obviously we'll just continue to, to follow government guidance to make sure that we get our students back into college as quickly and as safely as we can. We want them all back here full time as quickly as we possibly can get them here. 
So in terms of support for young people, there will be a number of young people who want to who come into college who do have uh, any support need. So we have a whole army of staff who are just waiting uh, to support young people when they start with us. And we have a number of students who have a number of needs. We're very experienced at supporting people with additional needs, whether it's dyslexia, we've got dedicated staff who can carry out assessments and make sure you get the access arrangements you require for exams. If you've got an education health care plan, I hope that one of our inclusion team have been in touch with you already. Uh, if they haven't, please reach out to us. Um, they should be talking to you and making sure that we have got that support in place for when you start with us. We have um, welfare and counselling services, so all these staff are about available to support young people. They just need to talk to us and let us know that that support need is there. Again, as I said earlier about virtual activities, we are making sure that some of that support is um, available virtually. So our counsellors have been continuing to provide counselling virtually through a number of platforms over the telephone, via email. But we've also recently signed up for the, to the Big White Wall, which is used by a number of universities and colleges. And this is a 24-7 um, counselling service which is available online for young people to access at any point. So every student who enrolls at the college will have access to this as a provision as well. So there's a lot of support out there which, has, um, which is available virtually even when you're not in college. So in terms of platforms, I've talked a lot about platforms. We, we have a number of platforms that are available for young people. So we have My Day, which is a way of young people seeing like what emails they've got. It's an app that you can download to your phone. It's a way of organising your schedule. We have Blackboard, which is our virtual learning environment. So that's where assignments are posted, where there's lots of course materials, and where students can post can submit their assignments. We've, we've increasingly used Teams. Some of you may have used this. So Microsoft Teams is again a way of interacting with people live and and be, being delivering sessions through Teams during the lockdown. What I can assure you of is during that first week of induction, your young person will be trained so they can effectively use all of these systems. Um, this has been increasingly important uh, during lockdown and lots and lots of students have done a brilliant job in engaging with these during lockdown. So we want to make sure that anybody who starts in September can use these as effectively to make sure that their learning isn't interrupted in any way and that they are confident in using these systems that are becoming part of education landscape, so whether they progress onto an apprenticeship in the future or whether they go on to university, I think going forward a lot of institutes will be using these um, platforms for, for learning. We do have a student services team, they're a fabulous team, so if at any point, and Neil will touch on this later, your young person changes their mind about what course, or they're still not sure, they, they think they've applied for, for the right course but they're not sure, I can assure you that we have matrix accreditation for our independent advice and guidance, so there's plenty of people in there who can talk to your son, daughter or the person you're caring for and make sure they've put them on the right path to achieve their outcome. If universities, so many of our the, the B6 and our vocational students progress onto university, we have dedicated staff who can support you with the UCAS journey. So whether that's writing personal statements, understanding what you need to include in your UCAS application, there are staff there who can support you with this. All of our young people get a free bus pass um, and many young people are entitled to a free college meal. So again, that will all be part of the enrolment process and you'll be able to access that um, when your, your son or daughter starts in September. That will be, be automatic, the free bus pass, and there's a, an application to go through for a free college meal if you are eligible. We also have an employment hub, so it's right next to Learner Services. If you've been on one of our open days, you may have been into the employment hub. So these are a dedicated team who are really working with young people who want to go down the apprenticeship route. So they may be looking for apprenticeship, they may have already secured an apprenticeship and want to join college. So if you come in to talk to the employment, they'll be able to give you lots of advice about the apprenticeships and how to move on to that if that's um, the, the choice that your son or daughter wants to make about their next steps after college. Lots of young people ask about the student union. Um, we, we do have a student union here at Dudley. They've been a fabulous student union for many years during lockdown. They've kept our college community going for students, so they've done lots of online activities, quizzes, tea and talk sessions, lots of things where young people can still feel that social side of college. 
So you are joining a great student union. They run our class rep um, system, which every, every class elects a representative who meets with their curriculum manager regularly. So that's a really important job for us because we really do want to capture learners' voices and understand what's working really well and what we need to improve on. So they, they do a number of campaigns, they run a, a number of events that are really important to our community. But it's not just about getting your discount card, which is definitely really important. It's also about the really, really important campaign. So this is our Holocaust Memorial event, which we run every year, which is run by our student union. And this is them campaigning for Love Our Colleges, which is a national campaign about getting um, equal funding for, for colleges. So it's, they, are, they do have a fun side, but they also have a really serious side about making the lives of students better. So I'm going to hand you back to Neil, who's going to talk about some practicalities about the college. Thank you very much, Diana. Yep, just a few last bits from me, really, to talk about a little few things that we uh, would ask um, for next academic year. If you could support us with this, mums, dads, carers, that would be much appreciated. Um, firstly, um, very early on in your course, your son, daughter, young person is going to get issued with an ID card. We do ask them to bring that into college and to wear it the whole time. It would be really helpful if you could support us in that. Uh, we're a big, a big college spread across the town. Um, we want to make sure that only people uh, who are entitled to be in here walk into the college buildings and the ID badge is how we do that and how we keep people safe here on site. So uh, please do encourage them in that. Um, equally, as Diana touched on, we've got lots of arrangements in place that we've had to put in place since the outbreak of coronavirus. Um, there are all sorts of things. If you jump on our, on our website, just on the main college website, you can actually watch a safety video that walks you through how things are operating at the college, from how we're laying out rooms to temperature checks to uh, one-way routes around buildings and how you can order your food online and all that sort of thing. Uh, we do just ask that people um, familiarise themselves with those safety arrangements and adhere to them when they're in the college for obvious reasons. Um, as Diana said, we hope maybe that um, things won't be as strict as that come September if social distancing, for example, is relaxed further. But obviously whatever safety arrangements are in place, it's important they're adhered to. Beyond that, we also do issue out bits of uniform and safety equipment for certain bits of practical activity, and we'd ask people to wear that whenever they're instructed to do so. And equally, we're extremely proud of the town centre campus. You've seen some of the buildings um, there um, at the start of this presentation. We've spent a lot of money developing some really great facilities. So I'm afraid there's no smoking anywhere on our site, and we do ask people to take very, very good care of them when they're there. All of this is um, included in what we call the Code of Conduct, which we ask every student to commit to when they start with us. There's a copy of it in your parent guide that you'll be able to access on the website. Uh, there'll be a link to it close to wherever you're, you're watching this video, um, which just really is uh, asking people to commit to working with us to make this a safe and a harmonious um, place to study. There are a couple of ways that you can get involved, mums and dads and carers. There are some parent consultation evenings, um, usually one in the autumn term and one in the spring term. Obviously, it remains to be determined whether we'll be able to do those physically. I certainly hope so, where we invite you into college um, to come and chat through with your tutors how your son or daughter is getting on, or whether we might need to do it remotely if social distancing is still in effect. Uh, but you'll receive a letter nearer the time inviting you to each of those events. And Diana mentioned a few online tools. One of the ones she mentioned was Pro Portal. Um, that is our student individual learning plan. It's available online. You can ask your son or daughter or young person to log into the website anytime and that allows you to see all their comments from their tutors, their attendance, um, any notices of commendation that they've got, their grades so far and, and so on. So uh, in terms of staying in contact, that can be a really good route through. What's going to happen next? Well, as I said, there'll be lots of opportunities to talk to uh, myself and Diana and other colleagues over the summer due to online events that we are running. But when it comes to enrolment, uh, we'll be doing that completely online for the first time this year. Normally, you would cut your son or daughter would come into the college to enrol uh, in person. Again, we don't think it's appropriate to have hundreds of people queuing up to do enrolment under the current circumstances. So we're going to be processing that online and you'll get a um, message, a letter, an email coming out in early August with instructions on how to do that. For anybody who needs support with that and really can't manage to complete it online, we will be offering 
uh, ways for you to complete it on site here in small controlled groups. But more on that later in the summer. One thing that, um, that I do want to stress, and I think it's more important this year than, than ever, is we nearly always get some people who change their minds about their course. And we get asked this question, what, 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 what about if I'm not sure I've chosen the right course? And we're particularly conscious of that this year because some people may well have applied for courses since the lockdown and won't actually even have visited the college yet. They won't have seen our facilities, spoken with the tutor and so on. And you may have taken part in online activities but won't actually have physically been in the college. Well, um, there are a few things just to make you aware of in that respect. First of all, as Diana touched on, we're going to do a very different first six weeks to every single programme this academic year. Focusing on making sure that we're helping students to catch up on anything they've missed during a period that they've been out of education, to really help them settle into the college and support them to make sure they have made the right choice. And we will be allowing people and supporting people actually to move around courses or to change levels if we think or they think that it's better for them during those opening six weeks. So please be assured that you're not um, uh, committing to any course particularly in those first few weeks. If, it, if you need to move, you can, and we can support you with that. Um, how, how does anybody flag up a concern if that does happen? Well, um, cl clearly just talk to us. Um, your main contact and your son or daughter or young person's main contact will be their personal tutor. Um, speak to them in the first instance if you've got any concerns about wanting to change course or um, any other concerns really in relation to settling into college life. Um, the personal tutors here are fantastic, I'm sure they'll do a great job of taking care of you or your son or daughter. But if they're not, for any reason, then jump onto our website. If you click on About Us, you can see all the senior team, including myself, Diana, and all our assistant principals and other people that you might need to get hold of, uh, along with their uh, contact email addresses and telephone numbers, so you can reach any office at any point to flag up any concerns or issues that you might have. You've got my promise if you email me, I'll get back to you within 24 hours to try and find a solution to whatever um, issue is you might have. And that's all really what we wanted to share with you today. Thank you ever so much for your patience in listening. I know sitting and listening to videos online is not the same as doing things in the flesh, but I hope it's been useful. Uh, in terms of questions, then please do come along to one of our questions and answer sessions. They're all advertised on our website, so if you jump onto the website, you'll see a banner across the top, I would click on that, it'll tell you all about our online activities. We also are doing a whole range of keep warm activities all through the summer, so if your son or daughter has applied to us for September, they should already be receiving emails from us about online activities for, the, for them to complete, which will include a little sample of their course and a chance to meet their course tutor before their course starts. So please do keep an eye, up, an eye out for those. I hope that's been helpful to you. Uh, we look forward to seeing some of you perhaps at our online event soon. Otherwise, take care and we look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you very much.